Hi. Uh, everything that I'm about to show you, you will have done um, in your lesson, but I just want to go through it again for you in case you missed it, um, or in case there's a cover lesson or something like that. Um, so on the class team, this is LGC for 2023, but it'll look very similar no matter what year and class you're in. Um, you'll see a number of files under production, and it probably won't look exactly what uh, what's on the screen here because um, there'll be some changes as we go along and as we develop the scheme of work. Um, but the files that we're looking at first of all are these four files here, Grade 1, MIDI 1, 2 and 3, and Hip Hop Beat 87 BPM. Now I'll explain what they are when we come to use them, but I'm going to show you how to download them to get your own copy of them. Um, so what you do is you go to the three dots at the right hand side of uh, the first file, G1 MIDI, more options, and click download. Then it puts it in your downloads folder. So if you do that for grade one, MIDI 1, 2 and 3, and hip hop beat 87 BPM, um, you can then check that they're in your downloads folder if you like. And sure enough, uh, there they are in mine. You'll see that the MIDI 1, 2 and 3 are very small. One kilobyte is not actually a video file. Um, and that the 87 BPM is a bit bigger. Um, still not very big, but 500 times the size. Um, if you're coming to this video after you've had a lesson on it, or perhaps during your first lesson on music production, uh, maybe you could have a think about why that might be. So once you've got those files, we need to make sure that you're signed up to Soundtrap. Now, if you're not already signed into Soundtrap, um, then you should go to Teams and there'll be a sign up link for you. It's different for every class. And all you need to do is click on that link. If it asks you to sign in, then it will give you the option to sign in with Microsoft. And that's the one you should click. Probably that will just let you straight in. Um, but if it doesn't, um, you need to use your normal Stonyhurst username and password. You'll then find something that looks a little bit like this. It should say Stonyhurst College in the top left hand side, and it should know your name as well automatically. It looks slightly different because this is my teacher layout. However, at this point, you go back to Teams. You don't go straight into Soundtrack, and you'll see that there's a Grade 1 coursework project here um, in your uh, in your teams and um, that's what you need to click on that will set you up um, a file in Soundtrap and although this file is empty um, it's important that you do use that link and just don't make your own empty file um, because if you do that I can't see it and it's not connected to the assignment so when you think you've handed it in you won't have done um, and at this point, all of the information I'm giving you is actually already written down for you in the coursework task assignment. Um, I'll explain in the lesson that um, although this is a coursework task, you're not necessarily going to send it off um, for coursework for grade one production. Um, though if that's something you're interested in, it's certainly something we can look at. Um, so if you're following those instructions and you prefer just to read them, this is the time to, to just go off and read them. If you want to see what it looks like on the screen, then stay here. But I am fundamentally doing the same thing as we have got written down and probably the same thing as you've done in the lesson. Um, so the first and most important thing to do, because the hip hop file you've downloaded has a tempo of 87, is to set the tempo to 87. And that's at the bottom of the, um, uh, of the screen in Soundtrap. And there's a number of ways you can you can set the tempo. You could just click here the tempo that you want the piece at. In fact, I managed to get it to go to 87 because I prepared that and practiced it earlier. Um, so if you were um, writing your own piece totally from scratch, that's what you could do. But for this one, we've been told that it's 87, and so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to set it at 87, and we're going to confirm. Once you've done that, we need to import our, our hip-hop beat. Um, so we're going to click on Import File. Um, now, when you've got a blank, um, uh, a blank screen in Soundtrap, you'll have these six options, loops, 
beat maker, synth, add new track, import file, and invite a friend. Um, and you can just click on import file. Later on, we'll need to go to file and then import and then import to track. And we might as well do that now that I opened it. So in my downloads folder, uh, I've got hip hop beat 87 BPM. I'll click open uh, and you'll see the why we set the tempo. First of all, it's actually exactly 16 bars long. It looks like it ends on bar 17, um, but that means it's 16 bars long because we start on one in music. We start on bar one. So that actually is kind of bar zero. Once we've done that, the next thing to do is to import the chords. Um, so we're going to import the track and you can select all three of these at the same time. I'll show you how I did that. Click on the top one, hold the shift button on your keyboard, click on the bottom one and it uh, then um, will uh, select anything in between and click open. Now you'll see that you've got several bars. In fact, perhaps you could work out how many that is. That's nine bars of rest for this chord. Then you've got 13 bars of rest for this chord and you've got 15 bars of rest before this set of chords. Now, obviously this isn't what we really want. It's showing us that they're in that order because um, the track's now named not one, two and three, but roads, roads and roads, which is the name of the type of electric piano sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to shorten them so they all begin on bar one. So at the bottom of um, the left edge of each of these, you'll see there's, um, when you hover, the arrow, the cursor changes to this, um, this other symbol. And if you then click and drag it to the start of that note, it means now it's only four bars long. And this one is two bars long. And the third one is also two bars long. We just have, just have to remember that they're in the order, the order one, two, three, um, like that. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do um, is record bass lines underneath each of these chord sequences. And the task tells us to make sure they are eight bars long, the bass line. So eight bars under each of the chord sequences. Now, this one's four, this one's two, and this one's two. So we're going to have to make them longer, but we're not going to write any more music. We're going to loop. So we're going to bring this one back to the start. And when we hovered at the bottom of the uh, of this particular um, chord sequence, we had this um, uh, symbol, which lets us know that we can extend it, in which case it becomes nothing or shorten it. But on the top, there's this loop symbol. And when you drag that off to the right, it just makes it longer by repeating what was already there, by looping it. So we're going to do that to make it eight bars long. And remember, when it's eight bars long, because we start on one, it's actually going right up to the number nine. And then we do the same for the second chord sequence. And the same, sorry, I've gone too far, for the third chord sequence. And you'll see now they're all eight bars long, but you can sort of see by the little dip um, in each of these that the first chord sequence, which is four bars long, we've repeated once, so we play it twice. We play the third and fourth chord sequence four times because they are a little bit um, uh, shorter. And we need to also loop our hip-hop beat to take it up 24 bars uh, in order to make sure that the drum beat doesn't just stop. So now recording our bass lines um, is now the creative part of the task, which I will have demonstrated um, in more detail in the lesson. Um, there are two ways of doing this, um, but they both start with adding the track. So you click Add New Track, it's going to be Keyboard. And as soon as you do that, it actually puts a keyboard up um, on the screen for you. Um, and the first way to do this now is to listen 
Um, the software I'm using to record this video, by the way, doesn't let me play the music out loud to you as I'm recording it. Um, so I'll just have to go away and do it, and, and you'll um, you'll see it on screen. Um, so the first way is that you can literally just play it in. Um, so you play the notes on the keyboard. You can probably see that it's uh, activating the keys there as I... And you can hear them. I know you can't hear them on this video, but I can hear them uh, on my uh, on my laptop here. Um, and then that will record it in in real time. You probably want to select a lower octave using those buttons there, and you probably want to select uh, a proper bass instrument. Um, and you can have a little bit of a, a play with some of them and select one that's really cool. Um, and you can play it in by listening to what it is that you're playing. Um, and seeing whether it fits with the chords. And now I've recorded in my first four bars. It's not very exciting. Um, you'll see I've got it open in piano roll. So that's instrument, click on piano roll, and you can see the notes. And if you've made a mistake, say that should have been a G, not a G flat, you can just drag it like that. Or if you felt that it should have been shorter, you can just shorten it like that. So if you make a mistake in playing, you can edit it. The other thing, though, is we can loop this, can't we? Because if it works underneath bars 1 to 4, it works underneath bars 5 to 8 as well, because it's the same chord sequence. The other way you can use this piano roll to help you work out what notes to use, and this is the second method of writing each bass line, is that you can actually open the chords in the piano roll view, and you can see what notes are in it. So your bass line is going to be one of these notes. So you can see that that's a C, that's a C. You can hover over it and it'll tell you, click on it, B, E, sorry, G. So a good starting point for some uh, bass line notes might be C, C, B, G. Or you go all the way down to the D at the bottom. And then you could go to your um, bass line and you could actually input those notes. And that is a perfectly legitimate way of writing a bass line. Do that and then loop it. So whichever way you do it, you need to do that for um, chord sequence one, chord sequence two, and chord sequence three. At this point, um, you need to um, make sure you've done that. Probably check with your teacher that it works really well. Um, if your teacher is available to you at the moment. Um, and um, then you can stop this video and move on to the next video. If you are checking something with your teacher, and perhaps you don't have the studies, if there's something you want them to look at, just send them a, a quick email, because they can access everything you do in Soundtrap. Um, no matter whether you click any hand-in buttons or anything, they can always see it. Um, once you've got this far, uh, reread the instructions in Teams, just check that you're happy that you followed everything um, as you should have done. Listen to the music. If it sounds right, great. If it doesn't sound quite right, open it up in the, um, in the piano roll. Compare your bass line to your, um, uh, to your chord sequence. And check that it makes sense. Make sure that you've done all your looping correctly. Make sure that... Um, the loops are exactly four or two bars long and not uh, a weird number. Um, and maybe go back a step if it isn't right. And the key test here is, does it sound right? Does it sound right to you? Um, and if it does, that's great. And you probably got it right. Well done. So that's the end of this video. Um, there is a second video for you to look at. Um, so if you got this far, well done. And I'll see you over there on the second video.